What's going on guys? Welcome to your sixth Java game applet tutorial. Again with me, Travis. What we're going to do in today's tutorial is add some physics to our game, make our ball look a little bit more realistic. What do I mean? Well, I'll just run it because I kind of programmed it. Um, and this is something, or this is what we're basically going to be doing. And this tutorial might take one more tutorial uh, to get something like that. Um, so a little bit more natural movement of our ball and uh, you know, add some friction to it, stuff like that. So what we're going to need for this tutorial is to change your dx and your dy to be doubles instead of integers, um, you know, and set your dy to be zero, set your dx to be zero just for uh, testing out our gravity and all that stuff. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up some kind of a gravity. Again, it's a double, and we're going to set that equal to be 15 to start out with. We're also going to set up a double, which is energy loss. And I'll explain what that is here and you know as we program. And lastly, we need to set up a change in time variable or a DT, uh, basically the step amount that we're taking. We're going to set that at point two. So get your variables set up um, just like that, and we should be good to go. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to delete everything that we did for our Y. So go out down to our run method, and everything that has a Y or a DY, delete all those if statements that we created for our last tutorial and uh, we're going to recreate it bigger and badder than uh, we did previously. So the first thing that we need to do is set up kind of a familiar if statement and you're going to be like what why do we just delete this and I'll be like hey shut up. We're going to say if y is greater than this dot get width um, or I'm sorry get height and uh, minus the radius minus one again for the same reasons as before. So this is if, you know, our ball is at the bottom of the screen, if we hit, you know, the very bottom of our applet, well, what do we want to do if our ball is, you know, bigger than our screen or if it's below where the bottom of our applet is? Well, we want to set our actual y position to be at the bottom of the screen. So again, we're just going to say this dot get height minus radius minus 1 um, and then what else do we want to do? We want to change the direction of our dy. So we're going to say dy is equal to uh, negative dy. Now what some of you guys might be thinking already is, hey, we set up our dy to be zero at the beginning. Why, why is that? Our ball isn't going to move at all. Well, the reason that we did that is we're going to allow gravity to change our dy for us. Think of it as if you're holding a ball in the air you just let go of the ball, your dy or your change in y is going to be zero and then gravity is going to pull that ball down and make our dy you know, a larger number. Whereas you know, if you had a ball and then you threw it up in the air, the second you released it, you'd have given it an initial dy, whether that be a negative or a positive. Um, it would have been some initial uh, a dy and then gravity would obviously act upon that force as well. But for just testing it out, we're going to set a dy as zero to start out with and let gravity do its course. So now that we've set up, you know, basically what we want to do when our ball hits the ground, uh, we also want to, you know, move our ball when it should or allow gravity to act upon it. So we're going to add an else statement. So if it's not at the bottom of our applet, what are we going to do? Well, we need to have some sort of a movement. Um, we're going to be using a physics formula. If you guys don't know physics, that's cool. Um, not a big deal. I should be teaching it pretty soon. This is just a physics physics formula to show the position over time. So we're going to have y is equal to y plus dy plus one half or 0.5 times gravity times dt squared. Um, you'll see that in physics quite a bit when you're working with movement and stuff like that. So don't worry about that. That's just basically, I'm going to go up above and leave a comment that's position. It's a position formula. So now that we have our position formula set up, even though it's giving us an error, so instead of saying y is equal to y plus, you know, we're just going to say y plus equal to, and then we're just going to delete, uh, delete that there. So it's basically the same concept. And now let's save this and run it, see what we get, see what improvements we need to make. Um, obviously her ball isn't moving any, anywhere, so that's a problem. So what we need to do now is set up our change in y, uh, or our dy, and we're going to set this equal to be dy plus gravity 
times dt. Again, another physics thing. If you guys don't understand what I'm saying, that's cool. It's just a formula to figure out uh, the change in velocity. So we're going to have dy plus equal to gravity times the change in time, or you know the dt. And we're just going to say uh, velocity uh, formula. And there we go. So let's run this, and hopefully uh, we get you know a bouncing movement. And as you can see here, it bounces naturally, like you'd expect a bouncy ball to bounce off the ground. Um, you know, it gets faster as it's going down, and then you know right after it hits the ground, it has a pretty fast speed going up, but that slows down and turns around over time. Um, so you get you know this kind of a bouncing mo movement. Awesome, right? Only thing is, is it's still not realistic. It looks a little bit better than before, and uh, not to get too much into the physics, but when a real ball in real life hits the ground, it loses some energy because of that impact. It gives off some heat, or it spins the ball, which loses some of the energy, which makes the ball not be able to bounce as high as where it started. So you lose some energy um, each time it bounces until eventually it just starts rolling. So now let's simulate that within our program. So the first thing we have to think about is, when is this ball going to hit the ground? Well, we know that. We know that's going to hit the ground if this if statement is true, because this is where we set our y value and we change the direction of our dy. So now what we're going to do is we're also going to take our dy, whether that be 20 um, or you know whatever it is, right when it hits the ground, instead of flipping that to a negative 20, Let's try and flip it to a negative 18 so it doesn't have as much speed upwards as it did when it came downwards. So we're going to have our dy equal to be dy times like 0.9. So that's what that's saying is if our ball had a speed of 20 right before it hit the ground, we had 20. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our 20 and we're going to times you know that by 0.9 or 90% and that's going to be 18 and then we're going to switch you know the direction of our speed so it goes upward so it's gonna be negative 18 that's what we want um, instead we're gonna change the format as well so you guys get used to doing it this way um, it's quicker programming um, and it's easier for people to read once you understand you know this kind of uh, methodology so all we're gonna say is dy times equal 0.9 or uh, to use our variable we're gonna say energy loss so that's the concept that we're using there. Now when we run this, we get something like that. Um, so that's cool, right? Perfect. Um, and as you can see, your ball is still kind of moving a little bit. So we're going to fix some of that stuff in the next tutorial. Uh, we're running out of time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And you, even if you don't understand the physics of it, um, that's all we're doing is we're adding some real life physics uh, to our game. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Catch you later.